Hi guys, welcome to another edition of F1 Podcast, uh, a podcast that I guess you could say is our last for the season proper. Mm. Uh, we head into Abu Dhabi uh, tomorrow, Pep. Uh, we're currently there now. Um, mate, uh, a bit of a momentous occasion, I guess. We've been podcasting all year and this is the last one we're doing this time uh, for the season, but we'll have more in the off-season. Absolutely, mate, and it's gone way too fast. I was saying to you earlier that uh, the last five, six races have gone way too quick, mate. Mm. I can't believe that this weekend is the last Formula One race of the season. It's the last Formula One race mm. season that Mark Webber won't be world champion. <laughs> mate, we are staring down a long winter, a warm summer. It's warming up here in Sydney, but mm. a, a long winter, and that's what, you know, I'm excited about the world championship and mm. the last race. I'm, I'm nervous. You'd I'm, be I'm, mental if you weren't excited. Yeah, I, I'm pumped up for it, mate, but I'm also a little bit sad because it is the last race and it's like, oh, yeah. yeah you, it's, it's happened too fast. It has. You, you about to cry? No, no, I'll be fine. Yeah, no. I'll, be, I'll be good. Just Yeah, I've got my off-season strategy. I've got the, you know, a definite strategy for off-season and, uh, yeah, it'll be okay, Max. I'll be fine. Hang in there, big fella. <laughs> uh, yes, you're quite right. Um, I just wanted to, before we uh, go on to talk about Abu Dhabi, I just wanted to uh, send our congratulations to the Williams team, the guys and girls back at the factory, mm. and, to, um, and to Hulkenberg, the Hulk. Yeah, read the conditions perfectly, so and got the lap in at the right time on the uh, on the dry tyres, Max, it was mm. great. Yeah. Hey, I, I really enjoyed seeing a Williams on pole position for the first time in a long time, uh, yeah. mate, so uh, well done to uh, Williams and, uh, and to Nico. Max, when you're in the thick of contract negotiations, mm. isn't it awesome to mm. say, oh yeah, pole position, tick. Yeah, yeah. Um, pole, pole position getter at uh, yeah. Brazil uh, 2010. Yeah, it was good, mate. It was good to see. Mm -hmm. And also Vettel to win the race, uh, keeping his championship um, uh, aspiration. Hopes alive. Yeah, exactly, yeah. alive. So it was good to see him, you know, still in the hunt, Max. Yeah, sure. And, uh, you, you know, we, uh, I guess, looking at the Red Bull 1-2, uh, another fantastic result. We've almost kind of got used to those. Mm. We started getting used to them in the, uh, yeah, the beginning, middle of the year. and. Uh, it's happened again, and uh, that win was pretty momentous for uh, for Red Bull because yes. it, uh, it allowed them the one two allowed them to uh, get the constructors world championship. What a fantastic effort! In their in only their sixth year in Formula One, six years in Formula One, mm. and they've done it, and they've done what a lot of people have said that they want to do, which is basically to buy some sort of infrastructure technology, mm. and uh, of course they bought Jaguar, mm. and. They've built that up over the years, getting consistently better. Mm -hmm. they, they've got a number of key people like Adrian and, and, oh. and Mark and, and Seb. They're a formidable and, team. And right? now they've won the World Championship as a constructor and mate, it's fantastic. It's fantastic for them. It's mm. great news. They must be selling a lot of those little cans. <laughs> they, they not must not this can. No, yeah. not that can. That's the daddy's can. Uh, but yeah, a great effort from Red Bull, and as I said, in only their sixth year, they've got, they're a formidable team, and they've taken on the might of uh, Ferrari and uh, and McLaren, Mercedes, mm. and smacked them. Yeah, and the uh, constructors generally, you know, they've yeah. bought an engine and and done it, and it's fantastic for them. That's right. So it's it's really good, and let, let's hope Williams can uh, can bounce back within the next year or two as mm. well. Another privateer team. Let's let's see him get up there. That'd be great. Yeah, mate, so we're moving on to Abu Dhabi now, the last race of the season. The elephant in the room. A pretty exciting circuit, and obviously we've got four drivers who can do this. And when before, Max, has this ever happened in Formula 1 where you've had four drivers who can win the World I can, Championship? I can tell you, and it's never happened before. Mm -hmm. There's four guys in contention. This is unprecedented. How Formula awesome one. is this, guys? Yeah. And mate, you look I'm at the, pumped up. You look it's at the, so good. You look at the grid this year. I mean, we're all sort of anticipating this last race. There were quite a few world champions running around, former world champions uh, running around in 2010. And you can see the caliber and the quality of these drivers. And it's no wonder that uh, Hamilton and up until a race ago, Button, uh, Alonso, uh, these guys are former world champions. Yeah. And uh, Mark Webber's up there at the pointy end yeah. uh, with them, so anything can happen. There's 20, roughly 20 different ways that this race could There's be massive out. permutations about what can happen, mate. Big time. And uh, Mark <coughs> Webber, I think, has got the right attitude in just saying, look, and I think Alonso and Bell are the same. I'm just going to run my race and see what happens. Yeah. Because after you get to about P, P2, P3, in, you know, it just... It, 
the results could be anywhere mm, mm. and it's mm. very very exciting mate as you mm. say four drivers who have a chance and yeah. a lot of you guys have made comments about Lewis saying don't write off Lewis and I personally don't because this is a world championship decider and anything can happen mm. especially in a world championship chip decider so well we only have to go back to 07 when Hamilton oh, sorry to 2008 when Hamilton won it on the last lap with five corners to go yeah absolutely uh, in the wet and uh, and won the championship or it's... or at turn one in the first rate in the first uh, lap oh. uh, we haven't seen much action in turn one but you know you never know something could happen Hamilton could I am anticipating that Hamilton will break extremely late depending on where he qualifies <laughs> of course but I'm assuming he'll qualify fairly well they've got their new F duct uh, at this race uh, McLaren and the new rear wing and they're uh, they're all mm. very happy uh, they're all going to be pumped so up that's I wouldn't what I'm be surprised turn yeah. one they're going to be pumped Ooh. up and you never know what could happen and Lewis of course you know I've said it before I'd be exactly the same mate if you've got a mathematical chance go for it, then you go way. for it and same with Vettel you know if he needs to yield to Mark and we'll talk about that in a minute then he'll do that you know at the appropriate time if the race unfolds or in else that way. if his chances are nil absolutely nil then maybe maybe he will make that decision but uh, four races mate uh, four drivers mate yeah. and how uh, exciting is it yeah, and we've got two teammates, so Max and I were saying earlier, you know, that Massa's obviously going to help Alonso. And if Bart he's in a position to, and the he, way he's driving he at the moment, he's not He's not going to be there. And Button, same thing, he's got, uh, Hamilton's got Button as kind of a rear gunner. Yep. But then you've got the two Red Bulls who are both in contention, so mate, it's going to be very, very exciting. The question that most people are asking is, if there is no mathematical chance, Seb, will you help Mark? Um, it's it, because Mark has obviously a much better chance. Uh, Max, your thoughts on that? Well, he's eight points up the road on uh, Fettel, and uh, we can all uh, argue as to why that is the case. You know, Red Bull have had uh, a couple of interesting races this year. Mm. Um, I would like to think that uh, Sebastian will. I mean, uh, as I've said to you off camera, he will have the eyes of the world on him, and if he doesn't, if he's in a position to that he is required, yeah. to do the right thing, as I've heard it uh, uh, phrased. Uh, if he doesn't, it will be an utter PR disaster for Red Bull for a start. Yeah, absolutely it will be. Yeah. Because there's going to be probably a billion people watching the uh, this uh, this final race. So I don't think he's really got much of a choice. If yeah. he can't mathematically win the race, he would look like a petulant, uh, arrogant, Blah, blah, blah. If he didn't help, yeah. If he didn't help, and and uh, and he would confirm what everyone's thought. But I I would like to think that he would do the uh, the right thing, as I know Mark would do for his teammate, as I know Fernando would do for any teammate that's quicker than him. Yeah, mate. If I were to put my Seb Vettel shoes on for a minute and imagine I was him, it's a size seven, <laughs> size seven clogs. <laughs> mate, I I'd definitely be yielding to my teammate to give him the world championship. Yep. I would play the team card mm -hmm. but I would know that every book and DVD and the history of Formula oh, One yeah. would be written knowing that my teammate got the world championship because I I, I admitted I allowed him yeah. to have a world championship mm -hmm. and so you know I, I would do it so you, you think it would be a bit of a bittersweet victory if, well for uh, Mark Webber in this Mark. case it, you know he would defend it and say well it's over a hot entire season yes, and this is a long race and yeah. You all know, right. I appreciate it's a team sport, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But we'd all know. Mark would know, Seb would know, that that's what happened. And I would do it. And, uh, you know, th this is all assuming, of, of course, that Alonso's out of the picture and it's between the two Red Bull... Uh, sorry, Alonso's in contention mm. and that the two Red Bull drivers are, are, are at the front. Mm. And uh, we'll see, mate. It's, it's going to be pretty exciting. I've been um, reading the, uh, the Formula One press... I do every day anyway, but I've been reading it with renewed interest of late because we're forgetting about the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is Fernando Alonso. Mm. Everyone's talking about whether Fettel will let Weber through. Exactly. So they're automatically assuming that Fettel will be quicker at, uh, uh, in qualifi yeah. qualifying. Uh, or that Alonso's not going to just run away with it and win the race. We're not, and, that's yeah. the thing. We're not talking about Alonso. The only person that's talking about uh, Alonso is uh, Stefano Domenicali. And Alonso. Uh, as, as he has. <laughs> yeah, and, and Fernando. Fernando's talking about himself. Can you hear the germs, Fernando? Um, 
But other than that, in the press, we've heard two parts of bugger all about uh, Fernando Alonso. It's all is that because of the engine, is it, or is it because the, the Red Bull's been so dominant over the season? Like, is it because of Alonso? You know, there's a big question mark, of course, for well. new Formula One fans about about Alonso's engine or yeah, reliability. Well, let's say sure, and uh, and I, I think that's a great story. Um, but we're now down to the last race. He's, mm. he's, his engine has to last. 55 laps of the race yeah. and the warm up lap and all that sort of thing and qualifying, mm. it's the last race. Oh, so I, I'm, I think Fernando's engine will be quite okay. I mean, you watch me eat my words if, if blue uh, smoke comes out of his ass. Mm. Um, but I think a lot of the attention has been focused, quite rightly, I guess, on Weber and Fettel. But we've, we've, we can't lose sight of the fact that Fernando Alonso is leading the world championship yeah. going into the last race. Exactly. You know, by, he's got a good little margin as well, so it's not mm. like it's only a couple of points. Yeah. And we'll have to see, mate. And uh, I can't say after the commercial break we'll do our tips because there's no commercial breaks in YouTube, Max. No. But there, there's <laughs> going like to be another, you guys. Exactly. <laughs> but there's going to be another video after this straight away where we talk about our tips, so you've got to stay tuned for that. All right. See you soon, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye.